Uh, 2000, when I graduated, I was gone for about nine months. I moved back home. A week later, 9-11 happened. And this is just me remembering that day. Uh, I have my notes just because it's, it's kind of long, so bear with me. Nine one one. Somebody call nine one one. It's it's an emergency. A nine one one emergency. Somebody, anybody. Some say they remember it like it was yesterday. I remember nine eleven like like it was today. September 11th, 2001. It's 8 a.m. and I am already awake. On a day I don't have to work and could be sleeping and I am hitting that alarm, peeling my ass out of bed and downing as much coffee as it takes to help ease this transition from sleep to awake. But see, the only thing I have to do today is help my aunt finish moving into our new place. The day started with us packing back and forth for about an hour moving boxes from my garage to her storage space. But on that day, it'll only take about 90 minutes to make the home that I call New York feel like a completely different place. It, it was a place that I wasn't sure how to live in after that attack. I spent the last 18 years traveling and moving around just so I could see the world. And having lived there in years, but New York, New York will always be my home. It's where I was born and raised, moving from cities to ghettos to middle class estates. I live and breathe New York and feel New York in my veins. And when I leave New York, it is always bittersweet. So when the news first came on that, warm September day. Shit, I was steady packing boxes and completely unaware of the disaster happening just 60 miles away. Until about 10 a.m. When I pull back up to my house thinking that this 10 a.m. is like any other. But here, now, stumbling out the front door of my house with tears pouring down his face comes Micah, my brother. And now, Micah's the oldest, and he's had it pretty rough. And life's beatings have made his heart hard and his spirit tough. So to see this man cry, well, that was a miracle in and of itself. Within 60 seconds, he's gone. And I'm standing alone in my driveway all along. All, all alone struggling to wrap my brain around the only eight words this man had the strength to speak. Between his tears and fears for future lost friends and family, he says, somebody just blew up the World Trade Center. And like that, he was gone. The first plane hit at about 8.45 this morning. And on his way to work now, he'd been watching the news since about nine o'clock. And now my brother, my fearless brother is an emotional wreck and I don't even know what to think. As I stand alone in my driveway, I look up at that front door and suddenly find it hard to blink. Because on the other side of that door, all I'm thinking about is the TV blaring in the next room. I try to step forward, but it feels like I'm frozen. It's like my body is now moving in slow motion. And at that moment, it was as if all nature of outside noise just dissipated. Except for the sound of the TV still blaring inside as it reaches my ears from those stairs. And as I walk through that door, I cannot help but stand and stare as plumes of black smoke tear gaping holes in the Manhattan air.
when the first plane hit. Some people thought maybe it was just a freak accident. But live footage shortly after showed those freaks causing another accident. It's only a few minutes after 10 right now and both towers have already been hit. The Pentagon is in shambles, and as the twin brothers stand burning, my stomach starts churning. My knees got so weak, I had to bend down slow just to reach for my seats. And all the footage was being collected and put on replay. Show me everything I missed while I was busy packing boxes with no delay. America's heart had just been crippled. We stood paralyzed in front of TV boxes with eyes transfixed as America watches. Time stood still. We had no need for watches. You know I watched the news for so long that I completely forgot about those movie boxes. And I was only in front of the TV for what felt like five minutes. But paralyzed by shock, I looked up at that clock and five hours had just passed like time had become infinite. And when time became infinite, I realized then that I could not sit still for another 60 seconds of one entire minute. But still feeling like I'm frozen and moving in slow motion. I reached for that remote in a feeble attempt to block this TV's control of my emotions. And just like that, click, the screen went black. I got up from that couch, stepped outside, but was still numb. I could feel nothing except for the wind at my back, which only came with a whisper. I then proceeded to sit down on my front steps and tried to shut off my brain for all of two minutes just so I could breathe some fresh air. But even the air in New York felt like it was different that day. It was like somebody laced it with agony, heartbreak, and utter dismay. You visit the Trade Center Memorial and you'll still feel it today. Some of us immediately mourned and cried. Some of us stood watching in shock with single tears filling up in our eyes. Well, some of us were so terrified and caught off guard, we didn't have the strength to cry. And I remember thinking, this is what it's like to watch real people die. To watch our sense of security fly out the window and get to buildings, and I'm still wondering why so many innocent people had to die. So I got up from those steps, still in shock and dry-eyed, and I started mowing the lawn just to try to calm my overwhelmed and racing mind. And as I pushed the mower across the lawn on that warm September day, I began to wonder, in between each and every breath, just what would cause somebody to leap from a 110-story building and plummet to their death. I saw the footage with my own two eyes and felt like I was falling myself. But I was fooling myself. We are all fooling ourselves. We're fooling ourselves if we think this war is over. We can't just go back to our social media distraction and act like we're not still daily losing soldiers. So please, if you would, take a moment of silence for me. To pay your respect for our heroes, our soldiers, our police, our firefighters who willingly marched into the darkness and crumbling debris just for the hope of saving as many lives from this tragedy as possible. It's about 10.30 a.m. September 11th, 2001. And we have just experienced 102 minutes that will change the world forever, that have changed the world forever. This war isn't over. 
America, this is a 911 emergency. It has been 18 years since that fate filled day, and we are still in a state of urgency. Thank you.